Stop trying to be a superstar. Make someone else a superstar. And then everybody's going to be like, whoa, that guy helped. That was a whole team effort. See, I'm going to get paid much better if I'm not a single gunner. I'm going to get paid if I have a whole operation around me. Go, man, we can shoot so much stuff. We have a team of people. This team of people will get paid greater than the rest of the team. We did a, a, a show just a little while ago on how much money you need to make, uh, how to get out of the gravity. And one of the things Sam asked, I uh, made a comment. Hey, uh, do you know what your employer wants, right? Like, how, how does the employer think? Um, and there uh, are very different type employers. Uh, I would recommend that you know the type of personality you are and what you can and can't do. Kind of like, do you like bureaucracy? Do you not like bureaucracy? Do you take orders well? Do you give orders well? Do you... You know, what your skill base is, organizations and leaders themselves all have kind of different characteristics. So I found it very important to find a place where uh, they didn't just let me run wild, but uh, they the environment allowed Gary to be Gary and I didn't have to become Sam or Bob or Larry. I, I was just myself to, to the to the most part. So the question came up, I think a lot of employees make this mistake. Let's say the employer is selling some type of software um, and they go out, run out, and they go talk to all the clients and they get some sales and they really worry about what the client wants. And that is really, really important. I find it very interesting, and most people don't think about, hey, what does your employer want, and how do you take care of him? Because I think he is your key customer, uh, especially, uh, for instance, executive management teams, and this makes me think of something that's near and dear to my heart, uh, sales and business development. You know, I've always said the sales and business development team, especially if you have a super salesman or a super biz dev guy, he is your best client because he's the one that's communicating to the clients. Um, and if that business development guy really gets into the mind of management, he really gets more deals done. Um, so I would start asking myself, hey, what can I like? Like very few people come up to me and go, hey, look, I know this is my job, but I have more horsepower. dude. What else can I help you with? There is so many things that people can help other people with. One, no one ever asked that question. Um, and two, even if they say there's nothing, it, it, you always leave it in my mind, oh, wow, that guy's willing to do whatever. Okay, so, so that's a really, you do not have to be a brain surgeon to understand that bosses are going to like to see people staying later, arriving earlier. They're available when there's an emergency. The, the leaders don't know when there's a problem showing up, right? So they like it when teams show up to solve problems and they're not complaining. Um, so w w one thing I've always been pretty good at is I, I go for the guy, my boss, whoever that is, and I think about, hey, what's going to make him very, very happy with Gary, okay? Like, what's going to make him very, very happy with Gary? Because what Gary wants is Gary wants a commission or a bonus, okay? And I'm going to actually tie in this last conversation I had about investing. That's what Gary wants, okay? That is Gary's big driver here, okay? Gary gets very, very excited about the bonus, okay? Especially if it's in stock or options that I don't have to pay for. I really like those things. So, so my job is to get this guy to smile so that he then gives me this bonus thing, right? Well, what do I know about the guy? Style, like mornings, evenings. What's the guy do? Like, when does he like ideas? When does he like analytics? When does he like to talk to the customers? When does he like to talk to the staff? When does he like to watch things? Everyone has a different way of learning. Um, 
I have worked with guys that, hey, three weeks before the meeting, we have to have the PowerPoints ready. I'm the wrong guy for that, okay? I'm probably not going to do anything three weeks in advance. Or I found a guy that, like this cat that I worked for for years, and we planned the moment before we showed up. Like we, we would be flying into Manhattan and we're putting the PowerPoint together in Manhattan. Um, now, now, you could say that was immature and it wasn't organized, or you could say, hey, we were so busy, that was the best we could do, and we didn't have three weeks of planning like Chevron and Mobile. I mean, they do a great job, but three weeks to put a PowerPoint together, come on. Um, so, so, again, this is style, right? I, I started learning, hey, I'm good on... I'm good working under pressure. I'm not so good working on, okay, we have to do a PowerPoint that one day we may or may not deliver. Um, so style, character of the company. Okay, these are all really important things that uh, the culture. Okay, these are important to know. And where do you fit in? But start asking this guy, hey, like, I had a guy that all he cared about was the numbers, man. And I knew that, okay? He cared, but I can put numbers on a board like no one I know. And uh, the guy, I think he protected me from getting fired three times. The guy was just like, this is crazy, dude. Like, why would you fire a guy that's producing so much? Uh, and by the way, when companies get big, sometimes groups, managers come in and they don't like the high producers. I don't know why, but they don't. Um, so, for instance, this guy, y'all are probably looking at this stuff going, why is Gary focused on what kind of style he has? The other issue was I was in London. I'm five hours and uh, six hours ahead of Houston, Texas, which, which is where this guy was. Um, I had to learn that my diary and the import of my time was not important to him. Like, I had to move my whole schedule around to accommodate him, he was not going to take a phone call from me at 2 a.m. in the morning. And he's, so at one o'clock in the afternoons, you know, we, 1 p.m., we had a management meeting. That was pretty weird, right? Having, well, it was eight o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning for him. So I had to adjust some things um, and just produce, produce, because this cat, all he was interested in production. That, that was cool because I didn't have to deal with politics. There was a lot of stuff I just did not have to deal with. Um, if I'm working for a company and I want to secure myself, it's no different. Okay? It is no different whatsoever. I just have to know what is the main driver for the company. Okay? And... and the, the, the difficult part for people that build software and do operations is that you have no way to really generate more income. Um, I've always been in either sales or trading. I mean, it's really trading. Um, so I was able to transfer hours for risk, right? I took lots of risk, and that's the way this was made up. The challenge for someone who is support to a producer of money, revenue, or sales is how do you, as a support mechanism, elevate your game so that you can get a piece of the greater function of the risk taker, okay? And the way you do that is we have a gunner here, okay? This guy's the shooter. He, he is literally the guy that wins the war. He brings in the deaths or the money, okay? He shoots the deer. Now, guess what? We're not going to ask this guy with a big gun and all the ammo to go out and then go cut the deer up. This guy is now focused on another deer. That's what that guy's job is. It's not to go clean the deer, gut it, put it through the laboratory, shave it all up, get rid of the hair, do all that. It's someone else. So guess what? Sam, Sam, who is supporting, my Sam, supporting the gunner, the shooter, one, he's starting to learn, oh, wow, Gary shoots a lot of different weapons. Cool. Then Sam gets to pick up the pieces of what I killed. Instead of me focusing on it, 
He then grabs all that and takes it off my plate. It's no longer my problem. He can then process it. I don't have to worry about it. And I'm on for the next site, right? I'm on for the next kill. And then I hand it over to him. Now, what's he doing? He is literally learning how to shoot. He's learning the whole process of targeting something, closing it, and then me handing it off to somebody. And doesn't he feel cool? Dude, I'm literally handing over something that I've incubated and created and said, hey, Sam's my man, Bob. In this case, the deer. The deer is a client. Here, client, I want to keep you alive. I want to do something for you. Hand it over to Sam. Sam's now going to take care of it because I'm shooting. I have a different mindset. I'm not thinking about, okay, this guy's got to get boarded. I've got to get him an invoice. I've got to you know, make sure Bob and the operations department takes care of him. There's lots of moving pieces. So if you're an employer, find a gunner. Dude. Find this guy, okay? Find this guy and make him a superstar. Stop trying to be a superstar. Make someone else a superstar. And then everybody's going to be like, whoa, that guy helped. That was a whole team effort. See, I'm going to get paid much better if I'm not a single gunner. I'm going to get paid if I have a whole operation around me. Go, man, we can shoot so much stuff. We have a team of people. This team of people will get paid greater than the rest of the team. Most certainly, okay? This is not complicated. It's just like going into an organ, any kind of large organization going, who are the players? Align yourself with those players and then expand that business. Help those guys explode. I don't know anybody that won't pay you well to do that. I'll pay you well to do it. Minimally, even if this guy's a dickhead, you're going to have so much experience after two years, you'll go do your own deal. That's the way you, do, you, you, you leverage your career. I, I don't know any other way, but and I think people need to look at this as you are leveraging your time. Like these careers at 27 or 47, you need to think about constantly, am I leveraging this? Am I able to propel myself above that gravity line? Hope that helps, guys.